Welcome to the Momsiety Club podcast. I'm your host, Tori Levine, and I like to think that I can keep calm in a difficult situation based on my background working in a psych hospital. But when I had kids, I was constantly questioning if I was doing things right or how I was messing them up this time. Add in a child with a chronic illness and I found myself full of anxiety. Momsiety is a real thing for every new parent, and when you add in a chronic illness, food allergy, or other challenging circumstances, it can become downright isolating. And that's why the Momsiety Club is here for you. Each week, we'll discuss all things motherhood, so join me and let's get rid of this Momsiety together. Hello, welcome back to the Momsiety Club podcast. Today, you are going to hear an awesome interview that I had with Marlene Spence. She is a mom, wife, and child behavior specialist, parenting coach, and founder of Cornerstone Family Services and the creator of Rewardum, a reusable routine chart for families, and it's really cool. Before you hear the interview, make sure you stay tuned to the end to hear about my new Sneeze Proof Your Pelvic Floor course that is now out so that you don't have to worry about the mom's anxiety of having little accidents when lifting or dancing or jumping with your little one. And please make sure that you are subscribed to the Mom's Anxiety Club podcast as well as our email list. You can join that at join.momsietyclub.com and you'll also get a free download of top ways to reduce your mom's anxiety. Okay, I love Marlene's mission, which is to shift parents and educators from feeling frustrated and hopeless to feeling relieved and hopeful. So without further ado, here is Marlene Spence. Hello, Marlene. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Anxiety Club podcast. I am excited to talk all about ways we can handle tantrums and give up on the overwhelming guilt. Uh, associated with that. So would you please tell listeners a little bit about yourself? Yes, absolutely. So um, I am a mom of two. My kids are now nine and 12. Uh, I'm from Toronto, Canada, and I am a positive parenting coach and behavior child, child behavior expert. So basically what that means is uh, I'm the one that when parents are just feeling at their wit's end and just completely just overwhelmed with their child behavior. Um, They just feel like they're in this cycle of, you know, unproductive yelling and threatening to take away things and nothing seems to be working. Uh, I'm the one that those parents work with to come up with more positive parenting strategies and to help them really build their confidence in being able to tackle, uh, you know, those really frustrating parenting moments um, because unfortunately they don't go away. (laughs) So it's, it's all about how do you manage them? Um, and they can come out saying like, yeah, I totally rocked that situation. So how did you, well, first off, how did you get into this line of work? And then I would love to hear about, you know, when you start with your children. So sorry, I gave you two questions at once, but <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So I uh, have been in the field for 20, over 20 years now. And I, even as a kid, I always just loved um, knowing the why of things. Like why do, you know, why does that work? I was the kid who would pull things apart to look inside and see how they work so I can put them back together. Um, And then I started to um, you know, I'll just hear about, you know, these problem children or these defiant children. And I always just had a heart for them. I always just had a passion. And I always just believed that, you know, um, no child is ever bad. And so I've always just kind of thought like, oh, why? Like, I wonder why they did that. Um, and so that furthered my studies into human psychology and child behavior. And again, that's just where my passion has just completely bloomed. Um, you know, just working in day treatment centers and school settings and just really helping, you know, what society would say those toughest kids. Um, and again, just realizing once you, once you really peel back a lot of those layers, 
um, you realize there's a soft little kid in there that just wants to be loved. And so um, I've loved this journey of being able to um, help educators and help parents um, be able to, you know, discover like what is what is their strength and how can we use that to really help them be more successful. Um, and so I started my own business um, three years ago, and uh, that was just a passion of again being a parent myself. I knew like, man, this is hard. <laughs> this is hard. Um, and so how can I like even just help and support parents who um, are looking for some support? Um, and then I forgot to mention, too, I'm also the creator of Reward on Visual Schedules. So that's creating just, again, routines and structures and just really realizing how important it is, um, you know, when we have routine and we have structure um, in our home, it really can set the tone um, and, and help us to have better days. And so, yes, I started that. That is so important. And I was going to, to ask you about that a little bit later. So yeah. thank you for bringing that up. Um, and I just really love how you were saying that, you know, connecting with the toughest of the tough. It's just so coincidental. Yesterday, I was uh, doing something in a training with uh, a bunch of counselors, and we were talking about oppositional defiance disorder. And I said, oh, you know, when I worked in the hospital and I, we had we you and I have similar backgrounds in working in schools and yeah day centers and different things like that. But I was like, you know, and when I was in the hospital, those were the kids who I always asked to be assigned. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't know why it was just like, I worked great with them. So maybe it is that finding the why, um, mm -hmm. what you're teaching me about myself at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So you're here to tell us how do we manage tantrums? So does this apply to is when they're two years old or is this for when they're older? Yes. Yeah, so this is at every stage, <laughs> you know, there's definitely your, our kids are going to transition. And so this is useful for every stage. So, you know, one all the way up, um, even I'm sure even some adult um, parents with adult children could probably yes. use some of these <laughs> strategies as well. Or like vice versa, you can always use it at work too on other. <laughs> yeah, your spouse, your partners, like absolutely, right? Because it's like, at the end of the day, we realize like a tantrum is our child saying they're communicating something and they're saying there's an unmet need here. Uh, there's something wrong. Uh, I'm unhappy. I'm frustrated about something, right? And so how they carry that out depending on where they are developmentally um, looks differently. But for our toddlers, right, they're, they don't have the, the language yet and still, you know, that part of their brain that allows them to be able to think through and be able to pause when they're frustrated just isn't there and, and doesn't fully develop until 26. So that, you know, they really go into, uh, easily go into that fight, flight, and fight mode very quickly. And so that sometimes when we see, you know, the tantrums and the crying and, and all of that. So you just mentioned it doesn't fully develop until 26, which I don't think lots of adults know uh, because <laughs> it's like, okay, you're 18, you're an adult, you need to act like an adult. But well, really you're not fully mentally <laughs> able to handle yeah. everything and yet. So I just like that little tidbit. <laughs> so tell us a little bit, how do you handle or how would you tell somebody to handle when their child maybe is younger? Cause we mostly deal with younger kids. Mm -hmm. um, the listeners here have younger kids. So, you know, <laughs> everybody knows those terrible twos, the three major. And then I've recently noticed I have a almost seven year old and there has been some like, <laughs> you know, there's a little devilish streak yep. coming in. Yep. So I know every, you can carry things across ages and stages. Um, but what is one of the key things you would tell someone with a younger child? Because the wording obviously is going to be a little different. Yes. 
Okay. So I always say parenting is as good as your mindset. So one of the things that, that, yeah. (laughs) So, I mean, it's, it's so important uh, that we don't look at it as, you know, our kids are crying. Um, You may have heard this too, right? Our kids aren't uh, giving us a hard time. They're having a hard time. And so if we're able to remember that, okay, Something's upset. Like they're not trying to manipulate you, right? They're not like these bad bratty like kids. Like they are communicating something. So if we can take a step back when you know our our kid is flaring in the middle of Walmart, <laughs> but it's hard. It is hard. Um, but if we can take a step back and be like, okay, they're communicating something, right? And if you can ask yourself, okay, so why is this happening now? Um, and really take a step back, I think it really helps us in how we're able to handle it. And I think if we also remember that um, in order to help our child with their emotions, we first need to be in charge of our own emotions. Yes. Really hard, right? Um, And so it's also remembering that if we want to de-escalate the situation, then we've got to be able to come in with a calm, Soothing, right? Even if I say it, I'm like, I can see parents like rolling their eyes. I can, right? Because I get that. Because it's hard. It is, it is hard, hard to do. Yeah. Especially when you you're think- like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Especially when you're like 10 minutes into this, where it's like up and down, up and down, up and down, and you've tried every single thing that you can, and you're just like, what else am I going to do? What else should I do? Yeah. And so I always encourage parents to just take a moment and pause for yourself because, and, and like do what you need to do. I have parents that I like, we have mantras that, you know, we put up um, to remind themselves because in that moment, right. We are just like, I'm going to absolutely lose it. And yeah, you're like, I think I've tried everything. Like what else can you do? And I think sometimes it's important that we can't be afraid of our kids crying. Um, it's okay. Like, let them cry. I, I, I think we have to remember that, okay, so they've been crying for 10 minutes. It's bothering me. So I need to take some space because I can't be supportive right now. Um, and it's okay if they're safe, right? And they're in a safe environment. They're not in any harm or danger or whatever. Then allow them to, to have those tears and have those feelings. So I think that's okay um, as well. So just remembering for parents themselves, to be able to just take a step back before you try to, you know, go in there and, (laughs) and get them to stop it. Uh, Take a step back for yourself and take a moment to pause um, and ask yourself, like, what am I feeling here? Um, I think that's really important to do. That's, that is really good. Do you recommend that, you know, the parent first, at least try to do a connection and then, step away or say why they're leaving because I'm just thinking because this is the mom society club podcast you know Mm -hmm. there's always tons of wisdom and information well you know if you leave your kid crying they're going to think you're abandoning them or if you do this then it's going to cause xyz so and I don't remember this with my first, but I definitely have been going through it in the past couple months where (laughs) the the two-year-old is just going and we've tried it all. And I'm like, okay, I just need to leave because I think this is making it worse. But it took me a long time to get there because I was still stuck in my head. Well, if I leave him yelling, he's going to like think I'm abandoned and we're not going to have this bonding relationship. Yeah. <laughs> right. And you know what? And as you said, like you had said so many times, we have gone in. So I do think the connection first is important. I think we definitely need to initially make that connection and see how we can support and see how we can help. Um, and, you know, let them know, like, hey, I noticed you're really sad about this, or I understand. So definitely make that connection. But yeah, if you, after, you know, 10 minutes and you're still like, oh, are you okay? It's going to be okay. You, you know, you're okay. And you, you feel like you're just kind of going out in this cycle and, and it, it, they're getting louder Then you're right. Like at one point you're like, okay, this clearly is not helping. And I think if we think of ad, as adults, 
um, you know, there's moments where we're just so overwhelmed and we do need some time and some space. And I think if we also um, realize, you know, what is happening in our brain, um, you know, at that point, so sometimes, you know, people call it like the lizard brain or the red brain, um, right? Where it's like, we are unable to process. Mm -hmm. um, so your child is not even, you might be saying all these stuff and your child is not processing <laughs> any of it. Right. <laughs> so you might as well <laughs> just not say anything, just be quiet. And sometimes too, sometimes it just means just standing there and not saying anything or just being beside them, and rubbing their shoulder as they cry. Um, but yeah, I think it's really important that the connection is there. Uh, but I definitely think, um, you know, with your toddlers, uh, especially with the older ones as well, uh, there does, there, and so, like, kids, and you'll know some kids are different, right? And I think it's so important too, that we begin to teach our kids too, that it's okay to say, I need some space right now. Because mm -hmm. sometimes that's what they need, right? Um, and then being able to shift their their attention to something else, I find, is really helpful as well. So if you find that they're kind of in this loop where they're just like crying, and then, you know, first it was, I wanted the cookie, and now it was, oh, but I wanted the doll, and you're realizing it's right. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever they see, <laughs> go into a void, yeah. like a void space, <laughs> the only way you're safe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, then being able to direct them to something um, is really important. So being able to plan ahead of kind of what that is, um, is really important as well. So maybe they have like a coloring center or something that they like to, maybe you can direct them to, you know, you have coloring, you have specific coloring sheets of their favorite character for these particular times. And you can say, hey, you know, do you want to, you know, color your favorite character and you know you can direct them and kind of defuse the situation like that right that is um that is a go-to in our house <laughs> sometimes unless coloring has started it <laughs> um <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> now this kind of goes into how do you set up your day to reduce tantrums or for the older kids, you know, whining about something or talking back about something. Um, mm -hmm. I would guess your reward ums come in with that, <laughs> which I, I yes. love. They're super cute. And I definitely need to get some because I'm all about the schedule, but I can't create it. And I'm like, okay, let's write it down on this piece of paper. Okay, let's write it down on that one. Yes, uh, they're definitely functional. Um, but it, it is so important to create structure and routine because it really allows everyone, it allows predictability and allows everybody to know what is happening for our day. And so if we look at kind of what are some of the things that are causing a lot of these tantrums or, you know, it's usually a transition, like you, they've been told to, you know, get off their iPad or they, you know, now you're there, they've been told to put on their shoes and we're going, you know, shopping or something like that. And it's like, whoa, like they didn't know that was even coming or uh, maybe you had said it, but they didn't remember, right? Oh, those transitions. Um, if only we could do one thing all day long. <laughs> if only. <laughs> and so our transitions are super, super hard. Um, and so even when it comes to transitions, like, again, um, having a schedule and having being able to plan kind of what's happening for the day um, really be, helps to be able to reduce a lot of that. And so, again, when your child can see, okay, so after dinner, we're going to the park, then you're not going to have them asking you a million times, are we going to the park now? Are we going to the park now? When are we going to the park? Are we going to the park now? Is it time yet? <laughs> <laughs> and they can go to their schedule. Now you're only saying, well, what, is it, what does our schedule say? And you can direct them to the schedule and they can be like, oh, we're going to the park after dinner. And be like, yeah, this is after dinner. Um, and then when you have like, yeah, <laughs> the, the listeners, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm raising my hand <laughs> um, <laughs> because that just triggered something that is actually happening in our house. It has been for a while, but 
it is now my six-year-old can tell time and read time, but still doesn't have a grasp of what time means and what it feels like. Right. So do you have a different way of structuring and saying, well, like we'll do all different, different types of things. We'll say like, well, dinner's at 5 PM and we're going after that, or we're going to the X, Y, Z at 11 AM. We have two hours. So for two hours, we have what you were just doing earlier. <laughs> it's, it's 901. Yeah, I know. Could we? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, yeah. So for those that, you know, again, and it's, it's really important too, that we remember, even though your child might be older developmentally, they still might not be able to grasp that, um, you know, time concept as well. Um, and so, yeah, I think using like task completion things. So when, and that's why too, having it scheduled as like tasks. So when this task is in, done, then the other one is done. Uh, but also I love, I'm a huge fan of the time timer. Um, and so Mine if you're in the other room, yes. And we have used that. Yes. Fallen off the, the wagon. I need to go grab it again and start it, start using it again. <laughs> yeah. And I love that because then the kids can visually see. So if you say it's going to be an hour, um, you know, and they're about to like say, are we going now? And, <laughs> and it's only been two minutes. They can begin to see, right, the red kind of elapse, and then they can see, like, oh, okay, so wow, time goes by really slow, right? And, and so, to visually see that. Oh uh, yeah, no, visually. So I was just gonna say for listeners, if you have no idea what that is, I will link to it in the show notes because it's awesome, and there mm -hmm. are they're a great way to help with that because we have also used like the Alexa, I'll say, because she's next to me. <laughs> as a timer <laughs> or pre all yeah, those things, awesome. I would say like, I'm setting a five minute timer when it goes off, we're going to leave. Um, and that was helpful, but sometimes still, if it's that long span of time and it's not visual, uh, those, those timers are great, you know, that you set the alarm, but you, that visual is so helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And so, as you said, uh, bringing it down into like activities of, you know, okay, so after lunch, like there's three activities and then, you know, whatever it is. Um, and that, that really helps too, but I love using my Alexa as well. Uh, it's so great. And now the kids even will set it. Um, and it's mm -hmm. great too, because then you can ask it, right? How much more time left? And it will tell you how much time has elapsed. So that's awesome too. Yes, that is great for when they, when they start doing that themselves. <laughs> um, well, so can you tell us a little bit more about your rewardums um, and how, how you started that, how you developed it, how you use it in your home? Yeah, absolutely. So I, um, I had the dream about <laughs> uh, you know, over five years now. And again, it was really just realizing um, in the school environment, um, you know, I was always using visuals and I would like, that was one of the first things that I was always setting up because I realized like, okay, so the child's frustrated. They don't know what's coming next. It's like all kind of a blur or sometimes our kids were sometimes not on the same schedule as they were as, you know, the regular class. So being able to set them up with visuals, um, and then again, um, you know, I, having my own kids, I was like, okay, I, I need to be able to establish some visuals here. And so I started looking out on the market and I realized like, oh, I was really happy with the, what I kind of saw out there. Um, there weren't really a lot of um, visuals out there with kids that looked like mine. Uh, there weren't a lot of visuals too that were, all of them were magnetic. And I kind of was like, oh, but I, nothing really in my house is magnetic mm -hmm. anymore. Um, and I wanted it to be able to be at my child's eye level. I wanted it to be able to stick where I wanted it to stick. Um, and most of them were like magnetic again, that kind of go in your fridge. And my problem was, well, my morning routine with the kids, like I cannot have that on the fridge unless we're brushing our teeth in front of the fridge. Right. If we don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
so yeah, then I was on this journey to kind of find something I realized I wasn't. And so my husband is the one that really pushed me and he's like, well, why don't you try to create that on your own? That's wonderful. Um, and so, yeah. And so um, we launched three years ago and um, again, it's, I was, it's very durable. So it's restickable and it resticks on any hard surface. And so like our morning routine, that's kind of where we started at first. That was one where I was like, oh my goodness, you guys are going to drive me nuts if I have to tell you to brush your teeth again. <laughs> so we started with our morning routine um, and I stick them right on the bathroom mirror. And uh, I also created like stars uh, that say I did it. And so that's kind of like, you know, your check mark of all the things that you've done and accomplished. Um, and so they would go through, you know, their tasks. And at first, I always encourage parents to get your kids involved in this process. And so if you lay out, okay, so these are kind of the tasks that we need to do in the morning. Which one do you want to do first? Um, and allowing them to schedule, they'll definitely be more um, involved and in wanting to, um, you know, participate in that. And so that's really been able to help um, be able to create like more better bedtime and, and morning time routines. Uh, but it also has really helped with chores uh, in our house. And so sure. I can like happily say my kids don't even like argue about like chores anymore. Uh, they argue sometimes with each other, <laughs> about who, but it's, it's now just a thing. And so I've really been able to um, set that up. And so again, it was like, we have like a list of chores and they're just simple things like sweeping the floor, uh, wiping the table. And so um, you know, someone has one of those uh, a week and that's their responsibility and then they switch. So of course it's fair, <laughs> so that, right? Everything has to be fair, apparently. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, and so we switch them up. And so um, I'm actually talking now because so I get a lot of questions about uh, what age should you start mm -hmm. chores? Um, and I actually just have a post about this today on my uh, rewards about, uh, you know, you can start as early as two and three. And I was, and at this stage, like our kids love being our little helpers, mm -hmm. right? And if we take a moment to sit back when they're playing, let's see if they have their little mini kitchens and whatever, like this is why they have mini kitchens and they have the mini vacuums and the mini, right? Like, because our kids love to mimic us and they love to be able to do those things. Um, so when your child is, uh, you know, playing in their dollhouse or, you know, playing those things, take a step back and see what they like are doing and then actually get them involved. And your child's going to be like, when you're like, hey, do you want to help me? You know, uh, and you give them a sponge and you're like, do you want to help me wipe the table today? Um, you know, they're going to absolutely love and enjoy that. And so you want to keep it fun and you want to keep it joyful, um, you know, rather than like, you know, a command of like, you need to do this now. Like, let them know this is just a responsibility, right? This is just something we do. Um, you know, when you're done, everyone's going to put their cup, you know, in the sink. So it's sometimes just those little things um, of helping, of being able to help your kids um, be able to help out. And so with the reward on schedules as well, you can even, uh, you know, have that for your two or three year olds and, you know, go through it together. And it's not necessarily that they're going to do it by themselves. But you're saying like, these are the things we do. After dinner, we put away our dishes in the sink or we load the dishwasher and right so that they have this idea or they know that this is what happens after dinner. They see you do it, put it on their schedule so they know this is what some, that they did. Okay, so I'm going to wash all the dishes. All you have to do is gather the cups. Can you pass me all the cups, right? And so you can make it really simple and really fun. Yes. And I, I'm just like seeing the two-year-old and when my other one was two, cause I, it's like so adorable when they're like two and three and they're doing like housework we had for our <laughs> one, he wanted his own mop. So we had a Swiffer that like you could, I took parts out of it. So it was smaller. And now for yeah. my second one, he, I have a Norwex mop and then there's like a hand one that looks very much like it so the hand one is his and just randomly he's like yeah I need my mop I'm gonna do some cleaning like thank you you go right ahead <laughs> yes 
So I love it. What we can do to continue that with them uh, and encourage it as they're younger so they continue it when they get older. So now they're called rewardums. Do you reward with them? Yes. Okay. okay. So I'm so glad you asked that. A lot of people are like, why is it called rewardums? Get a question. So um, I highly believe that it's so important that we positively reinforce our kids when they have done something, but not only when they've done something, but for their effort. And so it is so important that we reward them. We need to reward them. Um, and again, so even if, and this is, again, it's not for perfect tasks, right? It's for, wow, you, you helped me, right? Or look at you, like you were able to, you know, get the broom and they might not have done a really good job at all, but that's okay, right? <laughs> You're going to reward them for just being able to, you know, acknowledge that or just for the effort and just for trying. Um, and so, yes, I think it's really important that reward them, especially when you're beginning a new task or a new routine and you want to encourage them to continue doing it. And so they want to know, like, am I doing this right? Um, and so even if you have like four steps in the morning they need to complete and they've already only completed one, well, let's start with one and let's reward them and let's give them that positive reinforcement so that we can make it to two steps and then we can make it to three steps and make it all all the steps so yes it's really important that we uh, reward them and and re positively reinforce their efforts and their behaviors do you recommend things that we that are used as rewards or is it verbal affection hugs high fives because uh, I I I know a lot of times people forget like just high five or that verbal encouragement can mean a lot more than, you know, getting all the dollar bin things yeah. accumulated throughout your house. Yes, exactly. I actually strongly encourage kids, uh, parents to, yeah, it doesn't like, you don't need to be going to the dollar store and buying a trillion things. Not at all. Um, I love that. Yeah, just that high five, just that, oh my goodness, I'm noticing you um, being awesome. Um, that hug, that rub on the shoulder, that like all of that, um, you know, ooh, you get extra five minutes of, you know, TV time today because I saw how hard you worked on that. Um, so being able to even do that, oh, you get to pick the movie on Friday. Uh, so being able to reinforce them with all of those things, it doesn't always have to be something that's tangible. Um, and I also encourage um, parents too to look into their child's love language as well. So, you know, if they love quality time, if they love, you know, words of affirmation, uh, and if they love gifts, then maybe you are going to be, you know, giving gifts. But even gifts doesn't need to be this expensive, you know, games or something, right. or like $100 a game. Um so yes, I, I really think that it's just so important that we find out what, and our children are unique too, right? So what works for one or what's reinforcing for one isn't going to be for the other. So it's really being able to look at, you know, what are some of the things that your child would really love to work towards um, and how do you, and getting them to be on board with that. Well, um, that just with the love language has brought me back to kind of what you had said in the beginning too, with handling temper tantrums or overwhelm and stress in we all deal with things differently. Um, and actually I was thinking of the love languages when you were saying that, because yes, when we're trying to parent our child the same way that we would want to be, maybe they're not receiving yeah. it the same uh, so looking into the love languages and seeing like your similarities and your differences. I love how that works for handling tantrums as well mm -hmm. as positive reinforcement. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that concept as well. It really, really helps. And again, when it goes back to looking back of like, why is this happening now? And then you can be like, oh, okay. I haven't really spent any time with them today or, you know, oh, probably because, you know, I know they haven't really received any connection or words of affirmation. So that, that really helps. That's us. Well, uh, I want to be very respectful of your time because you have been wonderful coming to talk with us today. Uh, at the end of episodes, I like to ask guests 
uh, question about mom anxiety and realistic self-care. So would you share with us something that you've done to kind of handle your own anxiety and take some time for yourself today, this week, what have you done? Yes. Oh my goodness. So, you know what? I feel like this pandemic has totally transformed (laughs) me because I don't think I've ever been so mindful ever. Um, But one of the things that I now do uh, is I call it my hammock side. (laughs) So my kids know it's my hammock side. When mommy's having her hammock time, she's having her hammock time. (laughs) You can quiet. Um, and so I go in my backyard and I have a hammock in my backyard and I put my headphones on. And sometimes I even like listen to the ocean or I'll listen to like a meditation or just some music um, and just lay there in, in my hammock. And so when I feel like I'm just becoming miserable, miserable mommy, when I feel like I'm becoming oh, just overwhelmed um, and very anxious and I need to just take a moment. I now will try to go outside and I'll go in the hammock and I'll just lay down and I'll listen to something um, to kind of shift my mind back um, and to kind of restore myself. And then I feel a little bit better to be able to like tackle the task again. So I, I, I've been doing that. I actually try to start my morning like that. And then usually around lunchtime or something like that, I'm, I'm usually there again. I am very jealous because that sounds wonderful. <laughs> as soon as you said hammock, I was like, really? You have a hammock outside? No, ma- no matter where we have lived, there hasn't been a good place to like hook one up to trees or like mm. sit once. <laughs> that's, that's always my goal when I see them. I'm like, where could we put one? <laughs> yeah, so this is a standalone one. So it's awesome. I, I absolutely love it. Oh, uh, Wonderful. Well, would you please share where we can find you and follow you and find more information about what you do as well as rewardums? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you can find me and a lot of information about child behavior and my coaching services at MarleneSpence.com. Um, I'm also on uh, Instagram at Cornerstone F as in family and F. Um, and then there is Rewardum as well, which is uh, R-E-W-A-R-C-U-M, uh, and that's Rewardum.com, and also uh, Rewardum on Instagram as well. And both, I love both of your Instagram accounts. When you were talking about the stuff a little <laughs> earlier, that's what I was glancing down at, looking at the <laughs> Rewardums, and then seeing your, some I'm not sure who, but a cute little one sweeping. Oh, your son. It was your son. Yeah, my son. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, definitely go check Marlene out there. And I will link to all of those in the show notes as well. Um, any final words? I don't mean to put you on the spot, but, and if not, that's fine. No, no this has been fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, this is great. It's been such a awesome conversation. Yes, it was wonderful chatting with you. Thank you so much. I hope you at home, in your car, wherever you are, had as much fun listening to that as I did chatting with Marlene and learning all of the amazing things she had to tell us about managing tantrums and overwhelm and routines. Definitely, you're going to want to go follow her. She has two accounts on Instagram, Cornerstone FS and Rewardums, and they are both great uh, accounts. They're fun to watch. She has great tips on them. Those links are in the show notes as well as a link to the Time Timer, which is a great little thing to have around the house. We have we have two in our house, one for upstairs for getting ready and one for downstairs for sitting like at the kitchen table or around so that the kids know this is how much time you have left to get ready to finish breakfast um, or to clean up. And another way that you can get access to the show notes is at the Momsiety Club website or in your inbox when you subscribe to the Momsiety Club newsletter. You just have to head to join.momsietyclub.com and you'll sign up there. And when you sign up, you'll get access to free resources from the past, present, and future. 
If you are already a newsletter subscriber, you may have gotten some special news last week on another way that you can work with me. There's always the option for in-person or online one-on-one as well as the online membership, but now there's also a new 10 video course all under five minutes with tutorials that private clients generally pay me a minimum of $250 to work one-on-one with me just to learn the exercises that are included in this course. And this course is only $27, which is you are getting an incredible value. And guess what the course is called? Sneeze proof your pelvic floor. So I know it can be common to see things on social media that once you're a mom, you and your toddler will both be peeing your pants. But that does not need to happen. You can regain strength in your core and pelvic floor in these 10 simple exercise video tutorials. And these are things you can do practically anywhere with your little one being super little, newborn, all the way up till after your kids have their own kids. No weights, no exercise bands, no nothing. This is something that all clients of mine learn and we work on and they see improvement from. But since not everybody was able to come see me in person or one-on-one online, this course is now available for only $27. It's 10 videos all under five minutes and you can do them practically anywhere. There are enough things to have mom's anxiety about. We don't need to be worried about having a little accident while we're picking up our kids or jumping and dancing with them. So head to join.momsidyclub.com and find the info on Sneeze Proof Your Pelvic Floor. Well, Mama, thanks for joining me here today. Would you like to be featured on an upcoming episode? Or do you have a topic that you would like to hear about? Send me a message on social media at Club or email me hello at momsietyclub.com. I love hearing from you. The Momsiety Club podcast is not intended to take place of medical advice or therapy. If you are in crisis, call your local emergency number or the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at one 800 273 